don't be like me. Don't waste money on camera gear you're not going to use. I'm hoping to save you a little bit of money. We are going over gear that I regret in 2023. So what inspired this video was some recent gear pickups that I made for this YouTube channel and the business. I grabbed this Sigma 14 1.4. This lens is an absolute beast. Can't wait to use it on the SL2. Some videos are coming with this lens. And I also picked up this Sigma 85 1.4. I've been avoiding a portrait style low aperture lens on L mount for years now and finally decided to go with it. We'll have videos, like I said, on both of those things coming up in the future. But that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about cool new things. We're talking about old things that have just been sitting around my office. Now, the goal of this video is, like I said, to save you money, but also illuminate the mindset mistakes that I had around purchasing this gear. All of these purchases were made for the wrong reason, and I want to help you avoid the thought patterns that I had when I made these purchases. So here we go. The first piece of gear that I regret in 2023 pains me to say it is my Leica 35 F2 Summicron. Now this lens is a $4,000 lens and the reason I regret it is because I have not seen a return on that investment of $4,000. You see, all the camera gear that I use, I look at it as an investment that has a potential return. For example, my Nikon 14 to 24 lens that I bought very early in my career has made me over six figures. So a lens that I paid around $2,000 for making me $100,000 thousand dollars is an amazing investment. That's what you want with camera gear. And unfortunately, I have not made any money with this lens. I've used it in a couple YouTube videos. I've used it for a few things here and there, but I just haven't seen the return that I hoped for on my $4,000. So I have to say I regret getting this because I've had it for almost two years now at this point. And if I haven't made my money back, it wasn't the smartest decision. Now, something I'm trying to do to force myself to use this more is I picked up a different lens cap for this so I can remove this annoying square hood and put this circle hood on there. I'm hoping this helps me maybe bring this camera out a little bit more because now it will be smaller, but that remains to be seen. I could eventually end up selling that lens, but like I said, the image quality is awesome, so I need to find a place in my workflow for it. The second big mistake regrettable purchase is this Rode Podcaster Procaster thing. Now, the mindset mistake that I made around this was thinking that I had to be professional and legit to record my audio. I saw other YouTubers having an audio interface and I got tricked into the mindset of me not being professional enough by using this Rode NTG USB mic. But in reality, this mic fits perfectly into my workflow and I never needed this in the first place. I was just maybe insecure or something that I was just using a USB mic, whatever the case was, I tried to change something that was already working. So once I spent the money and got this, I tried it a couple times and realized, you know, learning something completely new is reinventing a wheel that I already have working, which was this setup, this mic, this laptop. So something you want to avoid is if you have a system that already works, don't overcomplicate it for the sake of trying to be professional. I know that's where your brain is going to go. You know, professionals have to act professional, but trust me, simple is always better. Now, the third thing I regret is this Leica flash right here. Now, the big reason I regret this is not because it's a flash. It's because it was so expensive and I have not used it as much as I thought. I have used it. I've made some cool photos, but once again, I'm trying to reinvent my process and reinvent the wheel and learn something new when I don't really have the bandwidth to do so. So the mistake in this purchase and the reason I regret it was because I bought it preemptively. I bought this before there was ever any space in my workflow or in the business to really learn how to implement it properly. And because I never gave myself the proper timing to do that, it's just sat on the shelf and it's waiting for me to pick up and begin using. So I'm hoping in the future to implement this more into my creativity, but we'll see. And unfortunately, any Leica product is very expensive. So putting the money into this and not using it 
not the smartest move on my part. Now, before we continue on with this list, two little housekeeping notes. One, I have a new print available on evanramp.com. It is this photo right here. It's a re-release of a print that I did about two years ago. If you want to support the channel, you can check it out. And if you're interested in selling your own prints, one of the biggest issues creators have is figuring out shipping. And today's sponsor, ShipStation, is how I ship all my physical products and it's how you can as well. Thank you to ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. I've been using ShipStation for years before they were a sponsor on this channel because selling physical products on evanramp.com like prints or the hat I'm wearing in today's video wouldn't be possible without them. ShipStation allows small business owners like you and me to easily organize, process, and automate shipping all from one convenient dashboard. ShipStation integrates simply into any marketplace including eBay, Amazon, and Etsy. So if you're like me and you have some gear you're considering selling or you're looking to start selling physical products on your website and taking your e-commerce business to the next level, remove the hassle of manually writing addresses and save yourself time at the post office by using ShipStation. On top of that, ShipStation offers favorable rates for USPS and UPS so you can save money as well. ShipStation is hooking up the channel with a free 60-day trial when you go to ShipStation.com slash Evan. That's ShipStation.com slash Evan to try a free 60-day trial. Spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks using ShipStation. So the fourth gear regret I have in 2023 is the Gitso Traveler tripod that my camera is currently mounted on. And the reason I regret this purchase is because it sucks. It's as simple as that. I hate this tripod. Now, the reason I hate this tripod so much it's not because it's not light it's incredibly light because it's carbon fiber it does that well it's also incredibly small so it fits into a suitcase i love those two aspects of it and those are the reasons i purchased this initially the reason i have regret here is because i didn't do my due diligence due diligence on how the tripod actually performs and this tripod is constantly having components come loose so the ball head is wiggling around the mechanism to unscrew the tripod legs is just not one that is favorable. A lot of times I'll think I tightened it enough and then the tripod's falling over. The lesson in this one is do your research and read reviews. I'm terrible at doing this, but it can save you some time because I've seen reviews where people are complaining about the exact same things that bother me. Now the fifth and final piece of gear that I regret in 2023 is the Ronin rs3 gimbal now what's funny about this is this is a gear purchase that i convinced myself i wouldn't regret i did all the mental gymnastics necessary to justify this purchase but if you go way back to like 2020 and watch the last video i made about this topic i regretted a gimbal in that video as well and the reason i regret this gimbal is the exact same reason i regret the last one and it's simply that i don't use it enough i haven't seen a return on the investment i made into this gimbal a lot of times i end up just shooting handheld for these youtube videos or on a tripod because it's easier. Now, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of grace on this one because Alec has his own RS3 that we use for a lot of the YouTube videos and I purchased this shortly before I started working with him. So who knows, maybe if I never met Alec and he didn't start helping with the YouTube videos, I might use this more, but if I had a time machine, I'd go back in time and tell myself, hey, you're about to meet this guy who has his own gimbal, who helps out with the videos, and you don't need to spend the money on this. But I'm trying to incorporate this into my workflow more, like most of the items on this list. That's everything I want to talk about in today's video. That is the gear that I regret, but more importantly, the mindset around the purchases, and I hope you can avoid making the mistakes that I did and falling into these traps of not reading reviews, thinking things are just going to fit into your workflow before you have a plan for them them or thinking your simple setup isn't good enough and wasting money on trying to look like a professional. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you are not yet. And if you want to learn the path that I used to grow my creative business to the place it is today, you can check out moderncreativemoney.com. You can enroll there and get an entire step-by-step -step breakdown of the process I used to grow my creative business. And if you don't know who I am, I'm Evan Ramp, the founder of moderncreativemoney.com. And this YouTube channel is for creators looking to explore ideas and make money with their camera and live a better creative life. So if that sounds like you, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Now, I'll see y'all in the next one.